Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about fatigue analysis in SOLIDWORKS. As you know, when material are subjected to cyclic loading, the loading that is not constant, as we studied in uh, statics and solid mechanics, and the load magnitude is increasing or decreasing, then the small cracks within the part will start to grow and then you'll see a sudden failure in the part that is not give us any warning ahead of time. And this phenomenon is called fatigue. And for many material, the number of cycles or the life of the part does depend on basically the um, amount of load that is on the part. So we have what we call S and curve which is the strength of the material based on the number of cycles. So let's say here, if you look at this SN curve that you can see, this is the strength. And when there is no change in the load, so the load is perfectly static, there is no cycle, cycle is zero, then your strength is going to be, let's say, the um, ultimate strength or the yield strength, depending on what kind of... Um, uh, parameter use here and then as the number of cycles of the load variation keeps going up you see that you start dropping the strength of the part so the part is going to be weaker than what you expected and it's going to fail way sooner right so for example if as you can see here is like somewhere between 10 to the 4 and 10 to the 9 so 10,000 cycles and uh, let's say a, a billion cycles really and somewhere here could be 10 to the 6 right so that's 10 to the 8 uh, 7 and 6 so a million cycle is somewhere here so it's definitely uh, dropping then after some number of cycles for many material the strength is not going to go further down so the strength is going to stay at a constant value and does not go any further down and this happens typically for um, um, iron and steel right where this is kind of becomes um, tangent to this horizontal asymptote and this limit it's what you might call fatigue limit or in, in textbook they also call it the endurance limit or endurance strength that's another terminology that is used or SE so this one might be the ultimate strength SU right but uh, or SY but it goes down drops to SE and then uh, does not go any further down this is as I said is what you're supposed to uh, see in uh, steel but if it's aluminum, you see it keeps going down and kind of approaching zero. So some material do have an endurance strength, some material don't. For them, the ultimate strength after so many cycles will be zero. For some of them, it's not going to go any further below anything. So the goal of this study here is if I have some part, let's say here this I-beam under a specific load, and some boundary condition and the load starts to kind of uh, go through some max and min or reverses and creates a like a cyclic load so if you look at the stress here for example right if you plot the stress here the maximum stress that you have here if you look at that sigma max that you have at the specific point that versus time is not going to be constant and it might follow, for example, like a harmonic pattern or some random pattern, right? But it definitely does oscillate. This is leading to fatigue. And the frequency of that oscillation does also matter. And you might say, well, how can that happen? Well, the reason is this direction, for example, of this 15,000 Newton is not always going to be downward. So this load here could be a variable load. So it can go 15,000, right? So if you call it F, this F also versus time could be variable. So it could be something like that. 
and you might say where in real life you would see such a thing that's one of the common places is where you have an uh, imbalance like unbalanced uh, rotary objects right so if you have a motor and this motor has a uh, an off-centered um, mass right or a mass that is not balanced when this guy goes through a cycle the um, force that you need to give it centripetal acceleration that force is going to change directions so now if that motor is mounted right here on the top of this beam then this force that you see or you might some people call it the uh, centrifugal force that force right when this mass is up here that is going to be upward when the mass is down here it's going to be downward then it's going to be to the left then it's going to be to the right so you see this force is kind of changing magnitude changing direction and so on that causes a uh, cyclic stress and that causes fatigue and now the question is how soon do I expect under this condition of loading for my part to fail, right? How many cycles can I expect my part to uh, endure and then after that to break? So again, it depends. If the stress that you have, if the sigma maximum that you have is below the max that that value can have, if that is below the endurance limit, clearly you have no problem. It, it Theoretically, it can last forever. You know, it, in reality, it's not. But if the sigma max is going to be here, above the endurance limit, then it's definitely not going to last forever. You have to bring it right onto this SN curve of the material and then project it down here, and then when you project it, if this is 10 to the 6, this is probably like 800,000 cycles, right? And now if that motor is rotating with, let's say, an RPM of, uh, let's say, 1,000, so 1,000 revolutions per minute, right? So each minute is 1,000. 800,000 means 800 minutes of operation, really. So in 800 minutes, that is, object is, um, ex, uh, subject, is expected to fail, right? So finding the life of a part based on the stress level, based on the SN curve, this is uh, a simple uh, thing that we want to study called fatigue analysis right and life cycle so now how do i do it in solidworks so here if we go to solidworks first thing is you cannot just right off the bat go to simulation go to new study and then click on the fatigue analysis under advanced simulation before you can do a fatigue analysis first you have you should be doing a static analysis this static analysis will tell the fatigue analysis what are the boundary conditions, where the load is, what are the maximum stress. And then all you do when you go to fatigue analysis here is beforehand you tell it whether it's a constant amplitude with basically defined cycles, whether it's a harmonic loading or what right whether there is a variable amplitude history data or anything so you choose the type of randomness or variation in the load and then go in and then this fatigue analysis will use the sigma max that you had here in the static analysis and kind of uh, at one point make it a max then make it a negative max then make it zero and kind of follows let's say if it's a harmonic cycling tries to um, have a harmonic load that has an amplitude of sigma max and with some frequency that you will specify. So again, before you do any fatigue analysis, you have to be doing static analysis. So here we are in static analysis first. I again define my beam as a, a, a cantilevered beam, one hand fixed. I applied some loading, fixed loading 15,000 Newton on the top. And I increase this load so that my sigma max is over the um, endurance limit of this material. 
and I used uh, steel, as I told you, right? So you see, I use cast alloy steel because they have endurance limit. And, or you could just use aluminum, it's up to you. But uh, I just chose, because um, as long as you don't expect the part to live forever, then aluminum will also have a curve. But as I said, there is no horizontal asymptote, it goes right to zero. So uh, here, this is my static, and clearly you see the stress analysis is there. So you clearly see the result of sigma max, sigma min, where they are happening and everything. As you can see, the maximum stress in the part is comparable to the yield strength. So a little bit more. So definitely you are getting into the plastic region. And definitely uh, in this case, you're not gonna have an infinite life. Because uh, the endurance limit is typically uh, less than the uh, yield strength. This, as I said, could be the ultimate strength or it could be yield strength depending on the application, right? Many times it could be the yield strength and as I said, this SE is less than SY. So since your sigma max here is a little bit or at the order of sigma Y or close to that, and this uh, endurance limit, as I said, um, is less than that, Definitely, I will be operating in this region. I will have a limited life for at least some portion of the material. So now with that in mind and with this result, I keep it as is. Now I go to a new study. I go under advanced simulation use fatigue and then I choose one of these types. In this case, since I have done a static cycle, I have to go with constant amplitude. I cannot go with this one because this needs a dynamic analysis it needs a vibration analysis beforehand. So you have to do a frequency analysis if you want to do this third one. And for these, you have to have a data of how these cycles are changing versus time or the load. So I choose the simplest case here, constant amplitude events with defined cycles. I start here and then it says, okay, I know the loading is constant amplitude. Do you want to uh, add more details? And you say, yes. So it's like what? You say, well, do you want it to be fully reversed or zero base or anything, right? So uh, I use zero based, right? Or you can use um, basically fully reversed so the cycle is completely reversed. And then here it says, do you want me to consider what? How many cycles for this test? And I said, 500,000, right? Can I go half a million cycles with this? And then uh, here on the result option, you can choose to use a specific area or the whole model. I use the whole model. And then you need to define the SN curve here. So uh, you right click on the I beam and you go to apply fatigue data and you either define it here yourself by typing values for N and S and you can make the curve to be linear or log like Most of the time it's a log like so we leave it as is. Either you define the numbers on this curve, so you define a bunch of points and the curve pass through them, or you say, well, could you get it for me from the material that I specified? And here I use the uh, carbon still, and it generates that S and curve values for you. So you see, for example, the strength of the part at a million cycles is uh, 78 mega pascal, while when you are at very low, uh, low cycle, if you look, your uh, strength is about 3.6 gig. So it's a huge drop. Now, of course, that is just a little bit too much, but if you come here and the low, low cycles, basically, something like 1,000 to 10,000 cycles, right? This is literally the area that you consider the curve for. Uh, the area below 10,000 cycles or 1,000 cycles, you don't consider for fatigue too much. But more than 10,000 cycles, if you look here, the uh, strength of the part is about 240 megs, but once you go from 10,000 to a million, it drops to 78. So it drops by three times. 
right? So the part is three times weaker when you use it for a million cycle instead of 10,000 cycles. So you apply this data from the material itself, and now I'm ready. The part is already meshed because you have done a static analysis, so this fatigue is going to take the data from the static analysis and the geometry and the load and everything. So you do not need to redefine the condition, boundary condition, the loading, the mesh, or the anything. Just run this steady. Okay, so once you have done the static analysis, fatigue is not going to take a ton of time, and it gives you the result immediately. You can go look at the life, and it says, hey, in the red parts, I have 110 to the 6, so I have a million cycle on the red areas without any problem. But in the blue areas, the life is only about what? And 9,000 cycles, as you can see. So this top and the bottom flange near the end, near the fixed boundary, they are not going to endure more than 9,000 cycles. Okay, because the stress is too high over there and uh, you cannot have a big life over there. So if you want to have a bigger life over there, you definitely need to bring down the load. 50,000 maybe is just a lot of load. So now maybe I go to 10,000, right? And uh, redo my static analysis and redo my fatigue analysis and hopefully... This time, my life cycle is a lot more than 10,000 or so, right? So I go and redo the fatigue here for you. And uh, then redo the experiment. And we'll see if the life of the part is changing. It should definitely go up. So now if you look, you see now you have 33,000 cycles instead of 9,000 in these areas. Still not a huge thing, right? So it is going to fail probably fast. So if you want that, really in this case, you have to go and further what? bring down your uh, maximum load that you can have on here. So you can have a lot more, a bigger life here in the uh, parts under uh, cyclic loading. So uh, hopefully this uh, simple brief uh, explanation to fatigue and fatigue analysis was useful to you. The topic of fatigue needs a lot of more discussions. But uh, we are going to do it in the future when I start the playlist machine design. That is going to be one topic that I'm going to go through in details and talk about different fatigue designs, Goodman method, Gerber method, and so many other things. So at the moment, I just keep it uh, fast and simple how to do it in SOLIDWORKS. So thank you so much for your attention. See you in my next video.